Hello and welcome to Tuner Tips by Todderbert. In front of us we have the Venlab VM200M. This is a digital multimeter on the cheap. Yes, you can find this on Amazon for retailing for $9.99. Currently at the making of this video, you can find this with a coupon for 49% off, bringing the price down to five bucks. Yes, five bucks. What an amazing bargain. Let's check it out. The Venlab 200M. Now I just reviewed the 600A, which I really liked. I saw this was five bucks with that coupon. I just couldn't resist and I promoted it and people are happy with it. I think it's cool. I picked one up and here we go. So simple box. There you go. Awesome. Yeah, I'm always on the lookout for something inexpensive for our radio building, radio repair, radio testing uh, projects we might be doing. You know, it's all around the house for testing outlets or testing the car battery, just different things we'll be doing. So yeah, took everything out of the box to make it quick. So let's go show you what you get in there. We get star of the show, the 200M. Yeah, it's a good size. Um, I like the fit. It's not bad at all. It's got a stand on it even. So yeah, we'll be showing you all the features here in a moment, but just a cool, <laughs> just go get it. It's five bucks. I mean, you can't go wrong. It works and it comes with batteries. Batteries included. Yes, uh, two AA batteries. It runs on double A's, which I find amazing. Um, I'm not sure if these are alkaline or not. Um, not sure, but there you go. Two AA batteries. Um, we get the probes, which are removable. Nice for five bucks. Again, I'm pretty impressed. They got little pierce points and they got little covers. Pull these covers off here. Get access to the side of the probe if you're trying to do some side testing. Sometimes you don't need the point, you need the side. So there you are. Um, and look, these run about 32 inch in length. Give you an idea. All right, cool. And then of course we get the wonderful manual yes the user manual which i always go over in my videos to keep you guys excited and happy about your new product <laughs> this is in case you lose it um you just freeze frame uh and you got it right there so it's a pretty basic tester uh it does pretty cool things for five bucks i mean it tests current dc current which is what we need uh in our uh, portable radio technology Oops, skip the head. There you go, DC measurement. Resistance measurement, nice. You can test transistors, which I haven't really done, but you can. It's kind of interesting there. Diode measurement, continuity measurement. Continuity is always good. I think every meter has it. Then we got specs here. Bring this up a little closer. Here you can see a 2000 count display, which I was going to mention. DC voltage, AC voltage. All right. And you got your DC current. Does not have AC current. The 600A does. Uh, we have resistance. We have that um, HFE. It's to measure the transistors. Diode. Audible continuity. And I think we're done with this book. So there you go. Simple. All right. Let's set aside. We're going to need these leads for sure. We're going to be doing some demoing. I like to demo these. They're fun. Um, yeah. Another tester in the house. Beautiful. Uh, so let's go over dimensions. We'll do a little size comparison. Um, so we have a width of two and three quarter inches. We have a height or length of five and three quarter inches. And we have a depth of one and three eighths of an inch. So like I said, a fairly nice size. You're not gonna lose it on the bench type of thing. So it's really nice. Uh, size comparison, you know, I just reviewed the Tesman, uh, the 510, I believe, the auto uh, mode one. Uh, this one's uh, not auto mode, you have to set the mode, but uh, not a big deal. Um, this is if you want quick, fast, this is $9.99. Uh, this isn't five bucks, uh, but you do get a light built into it. It does have this non-contact voltage sensing for AC current. Um, I find that kind of interesting, but does not measure current. You can see it only measures four things there. Voltage, resistance, and continuity. That's it. <laughs> you don't get the multitude of features here. So um, this is a backlight, but so does that. So, And this runs on two triple A's. This runs on two double A's. So but you can see the Tesman is quite smaller that might appeal to you and the fact that it's all auto might appeal to you as well if you're just looking to test batteries um and continuity this would be the one to get but if you're looking for a little bit more which you probably will uh, if you're building radios you get the vent lab for sure so set that aside other size comparison would be a deck of cards here iron man <laughs> he's the man with the master plan he tests the suit circuits with Ven lab <laughs> Break it down, man. Gene, 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 gene. It's Iron Man. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. But you get the idea. Deck of cards. Awesome. 
Yeah, so let's go over features of the Venlab VM200M. I'm pretty happy with five bucks. <laughs> you can't beat it. Like I said, check the links. If they're still five bucks, just get yourself one or two or three um, as a backup. Uh, totally worthy of it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool features too on this bad boy. Um, it's got this plastic housing, which is fairly cheap, but not too bad. It's got removable vinyl covering here, which you have to remove to get to the screws, I believe. Nope, the screws are all open. Okay, so you, you may have to take this off, though, to get the unit apart to take and change the fuse. There's a, a internal fuse here for the current. Uh, it's a little micro, uh, not a micro, a small glass fuse, a mini glass fuse. Uh, so, yeah, that's nice that they have a replaceable fuse there. But uh, overall quality, it feels pretty good. The switch feels good. The buttons feel nice. The connections are a little snug, uh, but everything else, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So there you go. Yeah, it's got this vinyl cover. It does come off. I was just trying to pull it to show you guys. It's tight fitting, but it does come off. I took it off so I could get inside, and there was a glass fuse there that was replaceable. Nice. It's good to have that. So at the front here, we got that 2,000 count display, which is rather large. We'll turn it on here. To the setting, I'd probably be at 20 volts. Um, yeah, so you get this. uh tells you what mode you're in. Uh, there's your... Uh, your measurement and then of course over here we have auto off you can't change that you can't disable it uh, I think it's 15 minutes not a big deal you have a light button here press and hold the light stays on for uh, 30 seconds um, if you don't uh, turn it off manually so there you go uh, over here we have a hold of course it holds the data value that you measure uh, so if you try to take a measurement on say resistance you can write it down you don't want it to disappear. Hit hold real quick so you can let go of your probes. It's always a nice thing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, really neat. True RMS. Okay, so as you can see the dial here, uh, lots of options uh, to set. Uh, designated by certain areas, you can see uh, we have AC current. And you can go over here. It should change to AC if we go to there. There you go. It says AC now. We can measure AC current uh, to up to 200 volts and then up to 600 volts. So that's not bad at all. Same with DC, you got 600 volts. DC mode, 600 volts. Goes down to, was it 200 millivolts? Yep. And then when, over here we have resistance. So if you're testing resistance, it beeps, of course, every time you make a change. You can set it to the value closest to the resistor you're trying to test. So you got 2 million ohms down to 200 ohms. Okay. Down over here we have a symbol for continuity and diode testing. There's an HFE. Um, I'm trying to remember what that stood for. Transistor DC gain section, something like that. And here's if you're using NPN or PN, PNP and you have the emitter. I'm trying to remember what B meant. It's been a while <laughs> since I've knew the three terms. Collector, C is a collector. Emitter, easy emitter. B is base, maybe? Yeah. Just trying to remember my terminology for transistors. It's been a while. I should know that, right, guys? But uh, I don't usually test transistors, so if you guys do, let me know. But you have that section there, and also your current section for DC. You have 10 amps, um, and it goes all the way down here, as you can see, milliamps to microamps. Wow, it gets pretty small. I would, to be safe, I would just keep it on 10 amp, uh, unless you're doing really fine measurements, uh, and it tells you to go lower. That way, you don't uh, you don't blow the fuse <laughs> with something too high. So there you are. Um, and then, of course, down here we have three connection points. Um, you plug in your COM, which is your black, and your negative. And then you can plug your positive into 10 amps for current measurement. Or you plug for voltage uh, readings, resistance, and everything else. For, you plug your positive into there. So either here or here. So that's how simple it is. Yeah. So we'll do some testing. Let's demo this bad boy. Um, oh, yeah. That's this guy beeping, telling me I better turn it off. It's been on for a while, so I'm just going to turn that off. <laughs> I was like, what's beeping? <laughs> uh, so yeah, DC current up to 10 amps, which is amazing. Resistance up to 2, two million ohms. 2 million ohms. Um, so yeah, and you have the ability to test, uh, you know, your diodes, continuity. So let's go ahead and have some fun. So I'm going to set this to test some batteries, because that's probably what most people are going to be doing. So I'll set it at 20 volts. Uh, and that'll definitely give me a good reading on most batteries I'm going to test. I'm going to plug my leads in, of course, common being the black wire. And then I'm going to plug in my positive wire to the volt side. And we're going to take some voltage readings. So the uh, best way i found for smaller batteries is to hold it in your hand. Uh, that's what we're going to do. 
So I have this AC Delco AA battery. I want to know what it is, so I'm just going to hold this here and hold this back here. What's the kind of reading I get? If I can hold them on there. There you go, 1.36, kind of low. Uh, probably could use a better battery, so there you go. That's why you test them. Um, that's cool to get an exact voltage, especially when you're dealing with, um, say, uh, 18650s or rechargeable lithiums. These are actually pretty important because usually you want storage voltages around 3.56 to 3.7. There you go. This is in storage mode, 3.6. And I think I have a battery here that's in active mode, which is higher, around 4 volts. So here's another 18650 flat top, positive on this side, negative on this side. There you go, 4.18. 4.2 is topped off. So there's that. Cool. So you get an idea for measuring batteries. All right. Um, next, uh, let's test resistor. Yeah, so I have the old school. I did the same thing in my uh, 600A video. I tested these, and uh, yeah, they have a 10% tolerance. They're nowhere close to 3.9, so that's why you test them. Uh, I believe this one's way out of range, this right one, but the left one is a little bit closer to range, so we'll test that. It should be around 4.2, uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So it's in the package. I'm going to try to test it in the package. We'll see how this goes on camera. I did it without being on camera. So we're going to change our setting to the resistance section. And we're going to go down to, say, close to that value. I'm going to go 20K. So I think that'll put us in the right area. OK, cool. So we're going to go ahead and try to get probes on those leads there inside the package. Because it's vintage. I don't feel like ripping that package open. Because it's 19 cents. And you can't buy these anymore. So there you go, 4.25. You can see the K and you can see the ohm there on the right. K lost connection there. I'm trying to stay on it. It's in the package. You get the idea. You saw the read. There we go. Cool. And that's about what you get with my other meters as well. So there you are. Simple. Just tested a resistor. Now, that's a good way of cheating if you don't want to like read the color bandings uh, or what's on the package. Like if it was loose in, your, in the box. I believe this one has color code. Yes, this tells you around the bag. Look at that. Got a color code chart. <laughs> That's handy. Not bad. Good job, Archer from Radio Shack. Nice. All right. Um, what else can we test? Continuity. Yeah, so let's test continuity and then we'll do final thoughts. So let's go down to, uh, whoops, wrong one, transistor mode. Let's go to continuity. Um, you would use this if you were trying to check a joint, a solder joint on your project. Uh, if you guys are watching my making waves, I'm trying to build a lot of cool radios. And I built this Volger Time radio. This is pretty neat. This is the VT16. I hope they still sell it because it's an amazing radio. Um, we got this large AM ferrite antenna. We got two speakers. It actually, is FM stereo. Uh, I am liking that a lot. And the AM uh, for the AM band comes in really well on here. But for just for test reasons, I'm gonna flip it over, give an idea for continuity. I hooked up my FM antenna, and I want to check to see if it's making good connection to the board there. So we'll check it from the screw point to where it goes to the board. So we'll put my probe here and we'll check continuity down the trace to see if it's okay. So that's telling me my solder joint is good. I'm touching right on the solder. So there you go. Nice loud beep and good to go. So there's our continuity and we're pretty much done for testing. I would test current. It's very simple to test current, but if you have all hands on deck, <laughs> You don't want to mess around because if you slip, you could pop a fuse. I don't want to do that, but uh, with current, this is pretty cool. So DC current, I could take my radio, like I have an 18650 radio. I don't have one handy in front of me. I guess I do, like an XH data here. And you can take the battery and you can pop the negative in, leave the positive sticking up, uh, not connected to the radio. And then you use the probes to bridge the connection from the positive terminal of the battery to the terminal uh, connection in the radio and that way you can measure the current it has to be done in series like that not in parallel in series and then you're able to see how much the radio is consuming at whatever volume you have uh, and what you're doing with the radio and you can see how long and you can actually do the math and figure out how long that battery is going to last you that's inside the radio so that's kind of neat um, so some you know get an idea if it runs 10 hours 20 hours uh, and it can do it on probably even with little radios like this like the c-crane Skywave, same deal. It's got two AA batteries. Just stick one battery up, kick the positive. I mean, it might be a better way. You could probably shim it and put your probe on each point there, and you're just bridging it, and you're, the shim is just to protect the battery from making the connection to the radio because you're supposed to make it with 
the probes. That's simple. So that's the current. Um, yeah, it's just, it's pretty simple to measure. It's just on camera. I don't want to make a mistake and short it out. But yeah, we'll go ahead and look at the back real quick and then we'll do final thoughts. Yeah, I didn't show you the back. Really cool. This is go ahead just open these up here. Pop this out. Yeah, for five bucks. You guys probably already bought this and you probably stopped this video already. So <laughs> you're probably already done. But it has a stand, which is cool. It's kind of tight fitting. There we go. But hey, it stands. That's freaking awesome. This doesn't stand. Stand, dude, stand. You have to get a stand for it. It says a built-in stand. And it runs on AA batteries. I think that's fantastic. And it has a replaceable fuse. User replaceable. I guess it has a mini glass fuse there. 20, uh, 20 amp fuse, I believe, or 10 amp fuse. I think it's 10 amp fuse. See on the back here? So I get it up and close and personal. It says uh, what we got there. Yeah, it just says to remove it. Yeah, I guess he just read what's on there. I forgot to check to see what it actually was written, but three screws opens up the case. Make sure you take this vinyl coating off. Like I said, this does come off. It's not a big deal. I don't know why I can't get this off on camera. It's pretty tight fitting at the moment. But uh, yeah, this does come off. Oh, there we go. As you can see, yeah, this just peels off. And you're able to open up your voltmeter to get to the fuse. So that's how that works. Boom, we're done. The Venlab 200M. Uh, if it's on sale, five bucks, no brainer. Pick it up. <laughs> you guys know, you guys know who test a lot. Five bucks is great. Chuck it anywhere, not even worry about it. Five bucks buys you what a slider at Arby's. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, recommended buy all day long for what it does. Yeah, you can't beat it. I was looking at some other cheapy one and it looks so cheap. I was afraid that if I used it, I might get zapped. <laughs> This one, no, I don't feel afraid to use it or feel of getting zapped. I probably won't be doing any 600 volt testing. I might be doing some AC testing at the highest, 120, not 220, but 120. Uh, and then maybe around, you know, 12 volts, 14 volts for a battery, you know, car battery. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you did. Two, if you like Venlab multimeters and want to see more, hit subscribe at the bell icon and get notified. If I do get more, I do like the brand. And three, comment below what you think about the Venlab VM200M. Would you get it over the Tesman 510? Would you get both? Would you just get a Tesman? Uh, would you get this with all its extras? Let me know. I'd be curious to what your thoughts are. All right, guys, take care, and we'll see you in my next video.